Good morning, everybody. This is Paul Neeson with Torah Life Ministries. I am doing about to do a radio interview on a local Christian radio station. That's actually not local. It's uh, it's from the Kentucky area. I'm in South Florida, and I figured I'd just throw it up here on the live feed. I'm about to call them in a second here. I'm going to try to put it on the speakerphone so uh, you guys can hear what they're asking me. If it doesn't come out clear enough, I might have to just pick up the receiver and talk into the receiver. But at least you'll get to hear what I'm saying. But I'll try to get it in the speakerphone so we can hear them. But uh, a fellow contacted me uh, last week from the Kentucky area. He says they have a show. It's not only on the internet on the internet radio station. This is a live radio station. So somebody's turning the dial and they're on. Now I have a radio show live here in South Florida on the radio station. So people driving their car, they could hear it. And it's very interesting because it's a Christian radio station. And I don't teach necessarily uh, against Christianity, but I teach for the Bible, and the Bible is against Christianity. Uh, because the system, the man-made system of Judaism, the man-made system of Christianity, is no different than the man-made system of anything. If it goes against the word of our Creator, and we're told to follow Yahshua, the one they call Jesus, and not follow man and man's ways. So, I don't know how this is going to go. I'm about to call them up in a minute here, uh, the radio station, and we'll see. And uh, uh, good morning, everybody that's watching, and uh, thank you for tuning in. And we'll see how it goes. Uh, let's see. I'll call him. I'll, I'll call right now. Let's see. Okay. So I might have to take it off the speaker, but we'll see how it goes. Give me a thumbs up if you could hear. Okay. Once they get on. Hello, this is uh, Paul Neeson. I'm calling for an uh, interview with uh, Brother Ron. Hello, Paul. This is Jake Grant. Um, let me just put you on. You'll be uh, hearing the station. We're going to a quick break, and then uh, Brother Ron will introduce you, and you'll be live on the air. Thank you very much. Looking forward to it. Amen. Okay, while I'm waiting there, if you guys could... With our guest today. Let's see. For your weather update for our Box 2 radio listening area. Today, mostly sunny, highs around 48. Tonight, mostly cloudy, lows around 30. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, highs around 54. Tomorrow night, partly cloudy, lows around 34. Once again, my name is Jacob Grant, and this has been your weather update for our Box 2 radio listening area. Brought to you by Pete Pontalillo News Corp. I'm about to go live.
out of the way in case you get it. I don't want to get fried with you. Okay, <laughs> if you get what you deserve. Wow. All right. Um, Brother Arthur wants to have you. You're, he said your name should be put in the pot. Yeah, because uh, I guess he's ta- see people taking up for you. I was just kidding about firing her. Now, you know, when I tell her that, she just says, oh, don't tempt me. Okay, so, you know, it doesn't hurt her to say that. Okay. Uh, back on our question, we'll be with our guest just momentarily. Let me clean up just a little bit. By the way, thank you, Joyce Duke, for taking care of this hour's broadcasting. And uh, Miss Claudia is in here with me, and she is uh, training. She's going to take over the program here one of these days. All right, we're getting ready for one in Chihuahua. When you say what God says, meditate on his word, your heart will pick up on his word and form an excellent belief within. We should say what he says. That is from Dr. Trent, and I, I do agree with that as well. Amen. Because I think that's how Peter uh, got that ability to make that confession. All right, but it was still divine revelation in his heart, and, that's, and spoken with his mouth. Absolutely. I agree. All right, be sure and get ready for that conference coming up at Bonneville Church of God, the, Salt, the Cave Country Salt Covenant Quarterly Conference. So come and be with us this Friday night at 7 and uh, Saturday morning at 10. We're going to have a great time. All right, we're blessed to have with us today our guest, and he's going to tell us how we need to eat. And uh, he's been eating raw food for a while, and, uh, you know, and we're going to hear all about this. Uh, but we're glad to have with us this brother. Uh, I'm Paul Nissan. Uh, is that right, Paul? That's correct. Thank you. I got it right. Yes. Right. Well, uh, I read a little bit about your bio, Paul, and uh, how do you do this? I mean, you're eating raw food diet, raw food. When we think of eggs, is, is it like raw eggs and things like that, or do you eat eggs? Uh, I, I do not eat eggs, but a person can eat raw eggs. If you are going to eat eggs, they're probably the healthiest way to eat them. Raw eggs. <laughs> and uh, then, uh, but you were actually, uh, can I say you were healed of colitis? Yes, I had something called uh, inflammatory bowel disease, which is also known as ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. And uh, I, switched, I stopped eating all processed food, and I, I got better. Now, you've written about eight books, is that right, Paul? That is correct. And all these are on the way we should be eaten? No, no, they're not all on the way we should be eaten, uh, but they all have something to do with the way we should be taking care of our temple. And health is more than just diet alone, uh, so they all have information in there about the food we should be eating. But uh, as you very well know, it's much more than just food. Okay. Oh, yeah, and a rest and... And uh, so many other ways, like uh, taking that, that day of week of rest. Uh, but I want to hear I want to hear what you're saying because you um, I want we we got a few questions already for you, but uh, I'll give them to you in just a moment. But you've been eating this way since uh, how long? Oh, it's been over 20 years now, and uh, it's it's something that. I had to make a big change because I eat the standard American diet, which stands for SAD, S-A-D, standard American diet, and which is pretty much processed foods. And uh, if you want, we could take it to the, the biblical side of things of how I eat and why I eat this way, because uh, it, 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 the way I eat it sounds like a surprise to many people, but it's not a surprise in the Bible. It's, it's, it talks all about eating uh, raw foods and eating healthy and, and not overeating and doing all these things that... Uh, bless us. Oh, I know. I understand. I, I mean, uh, years ago, I used to listen to a Baptist preacher out of Texas, Roloff, Lester Roloff, and uh, he was on a health food diet, and, uh, you know, he would tell you what you can eat, what you can't eat. So then I went out to visit the Roloff Enterprises there in Corpus Christi, Texas. You know, I couldn't find a Coke on the whole, the whole campus. No Coke machines, nothing. Yeah, they had carrot juice and all kinds of juices, but no cokes. Well, that's a good thing. You think so? How do you? What do you think happens when people drink cokes? <laughs> well, let me put it this way: if you pour Coca Cola on your the hood of your car, it'll uh, it'll create it'll destroy the paint. What do you think it's doing to your body? <laughs> well, what about if you drink cokes? Don't it? 
wouldn't it also kill the bacteria in your body, or would it, could it possibly uh, kill things out? You know, like sure, it will. The only thing it'll destroy is the good bacteria. <laughs> it will, and it'll feed the bad bacteria because you're basically drinking a can of carbonated sugar and uh, some other chemicals that are, are uh, cancer causing. So uh, there's absolutely nothing uh, that's uh, edifying the temple by drinking Coca-Cola. Uh, it's 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 one of the most wicked, evil things we could do to our body. Uh, our body, a wonderful body that our Creator designed and created and told us to take care of, that we would put something in it that's so evil. Uh, it's 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 something that the enemy has given us through deception, and, and it's it's a very uh, sad thing, but many people are deceived, and the scriptures talks about, you know, honoring our temple and taking care of our temple. So why would we do something like this is the real question, not what happens if we do something like this. Right. Uh, you know, it's, I've, I've talked to a few people uh, and that have your take on this, and I, I really understand what you're saying, but it's so against what Americans do. I mean, this is odd. I told somebody I'm having a person on that only eats raw food. And they said, what do they eat? You know, and it's not, it's so much against what all of us, you know, you're maybe a small half of a percent of all American people. Not even one percent, don't you think? Uh, uh, a very small percentage of it. But, you know, if you think about the way the world is today and you think about from a, scriptural proportion and how many people are truly following the scriptures not just saying they are and we think about uh, the minority that we become in today's crazy world and you think about you know even in the bible times you know the small percentage of people that were truly had a heart for 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 our wonderful creator look at noah you know he was the smallest percentage as was one person and uh it's about really uh you know listening as much as we could uh, to our Creator and, and taking care of what He gave us to take care of, the responsibility of taking care of our, our bodies. And I had to do it and be motivated because I had a disease, but how much better not to need a reason to just do it because our Creator said to. Yeah. Uh, what, what kind of meat do you eat? Do you eat raw meat? Uh, no, I am a vegetarian. I do not eat any animals. Okay. You're totally vegetarian. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm what people call a vegan. Yeah. Okay, now, uh, do you believe that in the, the millennium, the next phase, the next uh, phase, the next dispensation or the millennium, do you believe that all of us are going to be vegetarians? Uh, well, there are, there are signs to suggest that in terms of like saying uh, what the lamb and the lion will lay down next to each other and there will be no uh, murder or violence or anything like this. And, and some other signs that would suggest... Uh, we wouldn't be eating animals, uh, so uh, there are signs to suggest that. And do you believe that was the case in the Garden of Eden, that they were vegetarians? Uh, well, that was the original tent of our Creator in Genesis 129 when He said He's given us uh, all the green herbs and, and the seed-bearing fruits as our food. That was His initial intent uh, and, and until we sinned. Now that's Genesis what? Genesis 129. Sure. Well, uh, man, man sinned because he disobeyed, and uh, they went on the ark. Noah went on the ark, and he came off the ark, and it was a flood, and uh, there was no food to eat. Everything was underwater. So he uh, allowed them to eat some of the animals that they took on the ark, and our Creator knew he let them take clean animals and unclean animals. So when he told them, now you can eat animals, he gave them instructions, and the instructions were, you can eat animals, but with these restrictions. You have to eat uh, the, the clean animals, not to defile yourself with the, the, the unclean things that our Creator says. So even uh, in, in, in man's sin, our Creator saw the mercy and, and wouldn't let him eat the animals that were most harmful to man's health. And to that day, that's still in effect, that we are allowed to eat animals according to Scripture, but there are certain restrictions on which animals we are to eat. And it's very difficult in today's society to get the animals uh, that are healthy for us uh, back then because uh, even though we might call something clean according to scripture with uh, man-made uh, You know things getting involved. It's very difficult to get uh, truly 
healthy animals that are going to edify our bodies. So uh, the best and safest way, I believe, is to not eat them at all. But if somebody is going to eat them, they do have to go out of their way uh, and make sure that they're doing it in a way that's going to uh, build up their temple and not defile it. And most people today, including Christians, are, are just getting sick and dying because they're not looking at this. I mean, the majority of them don't even care about the what our Creator calls clean and unclean. But even beyond that, uh, it's, it's just so difficult to get truly clean animals today. Uh, this verse is in Genesis 1.29. God said, Behold, I've given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a yield, tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. So it does seem like that God at first made man uh, as a vegetarian. And that would make sense that in the millennium it would refer go back to that when all the things that God intended for the earth are, to, are redeemed. So I don't know. But I know that Jesus ate fish in his new body. So it looks like we're going to be able to eat fish in the millennium. Now people, you know, he ate fish with his disciples after he rose from the dead. So I guess uh, I know he probably ate the right kind of fish. I don't think he ate a, uh, what do you call that, Gretchen, uh, bottom feeder. Is that right? Catfish. Catfish. I don't think he ate catfish. Well, if I could suggest and say that, uh, you know, the word kosher that many people have heard of, uh, they, they don't necessarily understand, and there's three types of clean food or kosher food or ordained food according to our Creator. And uh, basically, there's biblical kosher, there's rabbinical kosher, and then there's common sense kosher. And uh, biblical kosher is what the Bible calls clean is okay to eat, and it gives a list of the animals that are okay to eat and the animals that are not clean and okay to eat. And then it goes to the rabbinical kosher, which is just made up some by Jewish system, which is not in effect today. It's just a, a, a Jewish man-made traditions. But then there's common sense kosher, which says, our Creator designed our bodies and gave us the tools we need to edify them and build them up. And I can assure you, uh, the fish that is swimming in the oceans today is not the same fish that was swimming in the oceans back at the time of Yeshua from a health, from a health standpoint. And uh, anyone that decides to eat fish from the ocean today, the majority of it is poisoning their bodies. And our Creator would not want us to poison our bodies. So you think that he ate fish that was a lot different than the fish we have today? Well, let me put it this way. There's radiation in the water today, and the fish is uh, <laughs> practically glowing that comes out of the water. So do you think it was the same fish? Creator never wanted us to receive things he called an abomination. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, he gave us the clean meats to eat. I'm not, in no way am I saying it's a sin to eat meat. I don't want anyone to get me uh, wrong here. Uh, he, he told us what was clean and unclean. And what was clean he called food. But what was unclean wasn't even food and isn't even considered food, according to Holy Scripture. So, uh, you know, if somebody's going to go the extra mile to get the clean meats, and you can do it if you're raising your own meat or if you know where it's coming from, uh, that's okay according to Scripture. But if you're going to go out and eat meat from the supermarket uh, that's done through factory farming and things like this, uh, chances are it's not clean according to our Creator and it's not healthy for our bodies. So uh, if you're going to go the extra mile to do that, go ahead and do that. It's not a sin to eat meat, but make sure you're doing it the right way and you know, we've got to do our best to uphold His, his Scriptures. coming in, but I, somebody else gave me the same text. It is First Timothy 4, uh, 4. So you believe that when it says every creature of God is good, that it's not really talking about every creature of God. It's just talking about some. Well, uh, it's, it's not... Every creature, uh, for every creature of God is good and nothing 
to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. Uh, well, you know, our Creator is very clear in, in His Torah, in the first five books of the Bible. And, and I know you, Brother Ron, wrote a book about the word law, and there's a difference between uh, man-made law and our Creator's guidelines and instructions. And uh, when He said, you know, these things are an abomination, uh, we should never put them to our bodies uh, or put them to our lips. Uh, and, and even in Peter, First Peter, many people misunderstand that when they said, you know, they think Peter was eating uh, unclean animals, and that wasn't, it had anything to do with food. So when he's talking about uh, everything is to be good, everything is to be clean, he's talking about food. He's not talking about what he called unclean. So uh, it's, it's very clear. And most people that misunderstand First Timothy and also Peter and so on, they just don't know uh, the original covenant, which says these things are forever. And it says in Timothy also, all scripture is profitable for man. And there was no new covenant at that time. And so he was talking about the foundation of Scripture, which uh, Yeshua, the one I called Jesus, pointed them towards, and that was Torah. So uh, I, would, I would turn the question around to, to people and say, and I understand people just uh, don't, haven't seen this and read it, but I would say, uh, why would our Creator tell us uh, that these things are an abomination and now say that uh, you can go ahead and just pray over them and now all of a sudden they're okay? Okay, I get your question. Brother Jake, our producer, wants to weigh in on this. Paul, um, maybe you could talk a little bit about uh, Peter's vision, um, which seems to be a big area of uh, contention between people who think we can eat unclean foods and those who say that the vision was actually about something else. Maybe you could it, talk a little bit more about that vision. Exactly, and that's what I was just referring to a moment ago. And basically, uh, they use food as a metaphor here. But uh, if you look at the scripture in context, it had nothing to do with food. What it was about was at that time, uh, it was considered a, an abomination for Jewish people to eat with non-Jewish people. And, uh, and here Peter is being shown that uh, those, uh, the Gentiles are no longer considered unclean. The Gentiles, uh, if they believe in Yeshua, it's fine for, for Jewish people to eat with them. And Peter did sit down and eat with them. And that's what that, the context of that scripture was about. It wasn't about food. As a matter of fact, when I'm doing a Bible study with somebody, if they start bringing that up and say it's about food, right away I know the, the, they're naive about Scripture because that's very clear when you take it in context that in no way would our Creator tell uh, Peter it's okay to eat unclean animals. In no way. And anyone to even suggest that is really grossly missing out on the foundation of Scripture. And, and, and sadly, this is what many of the churches teach, and it's a, it's a sad thing. Oh, uh, Brother Jake uh, uh, told me about it. He, he told me, and I think it's a great idea to write a book. Uh, uh, and for those of you listening, and, and uh, my people that are listening and don't know, uh, the fellow interviewed me, wrote a book, and uh, every time the word, I believe, law was written in, I don't know if it was just a New Testament or a whole Bible, he, he discussed it in his book, right? Right, right. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, but, but anyway, what do you think the Philippian jailer had for supper? I mean, do you think he... I mean, didn't Paul eat with them? Said it, what the Philippians? You said the Philippian jailer. Did did he eat supper with him, or did Peter eat with Cornelius? Do you know? Uh, I mean, I I don't know exactly who they ate with, but I'm sure they were eating with the Gentiles all the time. But I'm sure they weren't eating unclean foods. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, now, give us a little bit of your testimony. But you got sick. But uh, you're a Messianic Jew. Are you a Jewish person, or are you uh, Messianic, Jewish? Or? I, I grew up, uh, both my parents are Jewish, but I actually grew up an atheist. Uh, they didn't teach me anything about the Bible. And, uh, it, and then I became, got into the New Age. When I, after I got healed, I was into New Age uh, healing, and there's a lot of people that are healthy that are into the New Age. But believe it or not, those New Ages, from a diet standpoint and from a health standpoint, of following the Bible <laughs> better than most Christians. Uh, and then uh, my eyes were opened up to uh, uh, Yeshua, the one they call Jesus. And at that point, I was very confused because I said, I'm Jewish. How could I believe in Yeshua? And then uh, I just read a little bit more and I found out he was Jewish. And I said, this is going to be easy. I'm just going to follow what he says to do. So uh, I, I, I accepted Yeshua as my Messiah. And uh, I would be, uh, if you had to put a label on me, which I don't like to do, I, I would consider myself a follower of Yeshua. But a Messianic uh, Jewish person would be the the most accurate label, I, I would guess. Okay. Now, some are, some are saying you guys are completed Jews. 
You hear that term? I hear that, yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's a guy up there. I was, uh, you know, he's been a friend for years, uh, Jonathan Kahn. And he used to have a little program called A Nice Jewish Boy from Lodi, New Jersey. And we were, him and I were together in Philadelphia, the America for Jesus rally. And I saw a lot of Jews there. Uh, and uh, Jonathan was there. And then later on, I was with him at his church in uh, Wayne, New Jersey. So he's a Messianic Jew as well, but he doesn't say much about eating or any of that kind of thing. So what is your take on that? There's a lot of different views among the Messianic Jews themselves. Well, uh, of course there is. And I've met Jonathan and uh, a lot of other people. And even when I go to teach at uh, assemblies around the country, uh, there are certain things that people are still not willing to to give up, and that is their unclean food. Just like the when the Israel came out of uh, Egypt and to go into the Promised Land, even though they were free from the slavery of Egypt, uh, you know it wasn't free from them. They still desired the flesh pots of Egypt, and a lot of that still happens. So even even though uh, our eyes have been opened, a lot of people are still addicted to their old habits, and, and even if they're not going along with scripture. And, uh, you know, it's very hard for somebody to make that change. Some people actually say it's easier to change somebody's spiritual beliefs than it is their diet. And it's very true, and it's sad, but the enemy knows how to get to us, and he knows our weaknesses. And I would say uh, a lot of people's weakness is food, and, and the food we should eat. So, uh, you know, we just got to pray for, uh, for people uh, that haven't seen this yet, and I'm here to help people that are willing and desiring to make the change, uh, to show them how easy it is to eat healthier, but it's a change, and change takes time. And uh, we, but we're not doing it for us. The, the better we eat, the more energy we're going to have. The more energy we're going to have, the more we're going to be able to go out there and profess the gospel. All right. Now you come from New York, is that correct? You were. You, in... I'm, a, I'm from a little town called Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> little town. I've been to your little town. <laughs> you should. You should see the place where we're broadcasting from down here. My address is P.O. Box 2. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good uh, one. Brother Jake wants to weigh in on this. Uh, Paul, would you be able to explain maybe scientifically how eating clean is different from eating unclean? We've talked a little bit about biblically why it's something we should do, but uh, you know, medically, what are the benefits and what are the differences between unclean and clean food? You know, I was going to bring that up, Jake, because here we have... Uh, the pastor of the largest church in America, Joel Osteen, is telling his people to stop eating pork. If you look on a, you can find a YouTube, and it goes through some of the things that Jake is requesting, I think, you to say. But why? And so I was going to bring that up, too, what Jake is saying. Scientifically, uh, let us know what happens there. Well, since you did bring up the Joel Osteen thing, I'll just say is it, it's okay if somebody is telling somebody, about unclean food, but on the other hand, uh, you got to tell people about, you talked about completed, you know, and it's, it's all of the Torah, not just half of it, or half gospel, but uh, it, it's, you know, uh, scientifically, uh, first, there's different classifications of clean food. I go the extra mile to eat healthy food, because just because something is clean according to the Bible doesn't mean it's necessarily healthy. For example, the kosher meats that are being served uh, today, like a kanish, for example, a lot of Jewish people will eat uh, a, a kanish, which is basically a fried potato. Fried food is not healthy, even though it's considered okay according to the scripture. What man has done to it has destroyed uh, the food and even the soil the food comes from. So if you're getting truly healthy, clean food, which would be the uh, raw, ripe, fresh, organic fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds as the ideal part of your diet, what you're getting in that food from a scientific standpoint, number one, is enzymes. And enzymes uh, help it make it easier for the body to digest the food. When you cook a food uh, or you're eating a food that's not going to process the way it should, uh, the body has to work uh, extra hard to digest the food, and poor digestion is the beginning of all disease. And then when you uh, process a food, you're destroying all the, the nutrients in there, uh, the enzymes, the nutrients, the vitamins, and so on, which is creating a situation where you're creating a lot of waste and very little nutrients for the body, and that's uh, just a breeding ground for disease. And then finally, the unclean animals is just loaded with parasites and so on. If you take a can of Coca-Cola, like you mentioned before, and pour it over some pork, watch all the worms that come out of it. Are you serious? Yep. I can actually do that. I can actually do that uh, uh, experience. experiment. Experiment. Uh, uh, pour, coke, pour Coke on, on, on uh, pork. 
raw pork. Well, uh, if I, 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 I pray, brother, you're not eating raw pork, but I pray you're not eating any pork. But, uh, you know, may our eyes be open to, to his word. And uh, if you look on YouTube and look at that experiment, people do it all the time. They pour coke on pork and the worms come flying out of that thing. Oh, my goodness. I never thought about that. But, I, I mean, I, I don't eat pork, but as, as such. Good, good move, brother. Good. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> but uh, some people... They, 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 they think that's going to cure everything. They don't eat uh, unclean food, but they still, they're still sick a lot. What, what do you, how do you explain that? How do you explain well, as I was saying, there's a lot more to it than just diet alone. A lot more to it. And, uh, and yes. righteousness and, and understanding what uh, righteousness is according to Scripture and not just edifying the body, but just ex it, 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 amplifying the example of Yeshua, not only in works, but also in attitude. Uh, so there's a lot more to the disease part about it, but uh, when it comes to a lot of people being sick, look at rabbis, for example. They're following the kosher laws according to scripture, but they're all overweight, and they're all, you know, they're all unhealthy because their man has destroyed the food with, between microwaving and frying and so on. Uh, you know, it just was never meant to be that way. So if it has to pass your car window to get in your mouth, it shouldn't be considered food. <laughs> First of all, what you just said is even more of a reason to eat as simple as possible. And that's another reason why I eat just uh, plain fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Uh, it reduces the chances tremendously of something like that happening. Uh, and as for what you said about the Old and New Testament, in the New Testament, in, in, in 1 John, it says, uh, Sin is transgression of the law. And uh, the foundation of all scripture is the first five books of the Bible known as the Torah, which many people call the law. Uh, and, and that's what sin is, transgression of that. So if our Creator said, uh, don't do something, it's very difficult to mistranslate translate that. But because we desire, even people that read it and know it, still desire to eat the flesh pots of Egypt. They, they continue to go back to that. Uh, it is difficult to know what, you know, deception and people making meat and saying something is something else. And it's just, it's just, listen folks, if you want to be healthy, at least reduce, if not cut out, all of the meat. I mean, it's crazy what they're doing it to, to, to it today. Anyone that's up to date on the media and the news, they just see the stuff that goes into these animals and, and everything else. And I would submit to you that people do not like the taste of, uh, of dead animals. They like the taste of the way it's prepared. And get some fruits and vegetables and prepare it with uh, the same sauce, and you'll just enjoy it. Sure. My my website is TorahLifeMinistries.org. So TorahLifeMinistries.org. You can contact me there, and I'm doing live stuff on the internet all the time. And I thank you so much for for having me on the show today. God bless you, and you have a good day, my brother. Thank you. Thank you, Jake and Ron. Shalom. Right. Shalom. All right. This is a Messianic Jew telling you not to eat. Uh, any meat. Yeah, not to eat any meat. Wow. All right, a lot of good points there. We have a lot of <laughs> a lot of people texting. A little, little mop up on that right.
Okay, everybody, we just uh, finished that interview. Uh, I think it went uh, pretty decent. Uh, that's something I do quite often, and I don't know where that fellow stands on 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 the things I was saying, but but it's uh, it is what it is. What can I say? And uh, and 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 that's how it is. And some people get it. And even if one person heard it, and and they get it, and I'm glad I I think I got it recorded, so that's great. Uh, but even if one person heard it and got it, uh, all the better because. Uh, we need to understand the truth and about health, and uh, I'm not against what our creator says is okay. And if he says it's okay to eat meat, and somebody out there eats meat, you know, it's not a sin, like I said, to eat meat. Uh, however, uh, it's, it's a big issue if somebody's going to, uh, you know, continue to eat unhealthy and not take care of their bodies. So we need to be taking care of that, okay? Uh, so, uh, unfortunately, I don't know if the stream came out well over the internet, but...